So today we're going to cover chapter three, lesson four. Today we're going to um, learn several theorems um, and we're going to be writing proofs with perpendicular lines today. The first thing we're going to talk about is the distance from a point to a line. The distance from a point to a line is the length of the perpendicular segment from the point to the line. It is going to be the shortest distance from the point and the line. So in this particular picture, they're showing us the segment or the perpendicular segment that is going from point A to line K here. And notice it's indicated with the little right angle so this is our perpendicular segment, which is our distance. Now, in the homework and on the test, you're gonna get a picture with several segments drawn down to the line, and you're gonna have to determine which segment to do the distance formula. And what you're looking for is the right angle. You're looking for the perpendicular segment. So let me give you a little maybe visual to help you maybe remember that the distance from a point to a line is always gonna be the perpendicular segment. So let's say I draw two lines here. Think of these two lines as being the banks of a river. And then here is my water that's in the river. And here I am at this point standing right here and I wanna swim across this river, but it's full of alligators. I wanna get across this river as fast as I can, so I'm always going to find the shortest distance across this river, which is going to be the perpendicular segment. So I would swim straight across, and that would be the perpendicular segment. I would not wanna to try to swim diagonally, cause that would take way too long to get the other side of the river. So remember, whenever you're trying to find the distance from a point to a line, you're gonna look for the segment that has the right angle. You're looking for the perpendicular segment. So here is an example. So let's just review the distance formula that we learned back in chapter one. So this is our distance formula. Let me write it up here at the top because you will be using this in the homework and on the test, remember the distance formula, you're given two ordered pairs, so it's x sub two minus x sub one squared, and then you take and add that to the difference in the y's, and then you square root that whole total. So this is our distance formula. It wants me to find Okay, so this question is asking us to find the distance from point A to line BD. So point A is over here, and it's this order pair, negative three, positive three. So let me go ahead and write that down. They want me to find the distance to this line here, BD. Now, what you need to figure out is which segment that you need to find the distance for, okay? So what we need to do is look for the right angle. We're looking for the perpendicular segment. So the segment that we're gonna find the length of is gonna be AC, because that's the one that is perpendicular to line BD. If you do the length of AD, or AB, you will get it wrong. That is not the distance from point A to line BD. You have to do the distance from point A to point C, which is on line BD. So point C is the positive one, negative one. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and label my X1, Y1, so it's nice and easy to plug into the formula. So, and it doesn't matter which one is X1, Y1, and which one's X2, Y2. So I'm gonna go ahead and say this first one, A, is gonna be my X1, Y1, and then C will be my X2, Y2. I'm now gonna take these four numbers 
and I'm gonna plug them into the distance formula. So let's go ahead and replace. So I'm gonna do the x2 minus x1. So I'm gonna do one minus negative three squared plus negative one minus three squared and this whole thing is under the square root. Next, I'm gonna simplify these negative negatives. This will actually become one plus three, and this becomes negative one plus negative three under the square root. And this should be a little two here, not a three. It's squared. And then now I'm gonna square the four, square the negative four, and then I get 16 plus 16, add it together. And now for your homework tonight, you're gonna use your calculator and you're gonna just hit the square root button and square root 32, round it to the hundreds place, four point, or you get 5.65 something. So round it to the tenths place, 5.7. So in the homework tonight on questions two and three, you're gonna round to the tenths place. However, for the test, no calculator, you're gonna leave the answer exact, which is also called simplest radical form. Whenever you see either the instructions say simplest radical form, or if it says exact, it wants it left in a square root form. So let me go ahead and break down the 32. I know that 16 times two is 32. And then I recognize 16 is a perfect square. So I could go right to four square root two. So this is your answer for big ideas. This would be your answer on the test. But let's say you didn't wanna do 16 times two. What if you said it was four times eight? It really doesn't matter. If you do four times eight, you'll keep breaking it down until it's prime. And then you'll go back and you'll look for your pairs. And then this one has a pair of twos, that two comes out, another pair of twos, another two comes out. This poor guy at the end doesn't have a pair. So then you get the same answer that I got when I just did 16 times two. So for the test, you will be leaving it in simplest radical form. However, tonight for big ideas, it's expecting you to use your calculator. And again, you could use your calculator, your iPad calculator, whatever you have, but you'll round to the tenths place. All right, so the next one is the perpendicular bisector. Now we've already seen bisectors before. Remember a bisector, whether it's a segment bisector or an angle bisector, it just splits whatever it's bisecting into two congruent pieces. Now what's special about this is this bisector is gonna be a perpendicular line or a perpendicular segment. So a perpendicular bisector of line segment PQ is a line, is this line N with the following two properties. That N is perpendicular to PQ and that N passes through the midpoint and that midpoint is point M of segment PQ. So what we're looking for when we're trying to identify a perpendicular bisector is we're looking for the right angle and then we're also looking for the congruency marks. And that would indicate that that segment PQ was split into two congruent pieces. So again, what you're looking for to determine if it's a perpendicular bisector is the right angle and congruency marks. If it's got the right angle and that the segment was split into two congruent pieces, then you know it's a perpendicular bisector. Now, before this, I could have a segment and it could be P and Q and it could be bisected here. And I could say that this is line N and it could be bisected, it could have congruency marks. However, this one's missing the right angle. So all this is, 
line N is just a bisector. It's not a perpendicular bisector. They both do the same thing, but what's different is the perpendicular bisector is gonna form right angles when it bisects it. This next theorem is called the linear pair perpendicular theorem. And this one states that if two lines intersect to form a linear pair of congruent angles, then the lines are perpendicular. So in this particular case, if angle one is congruent to angle two, then G is perpendicular to H. So in other words, remember a linear pair is 180. And then we know that when 180 is divided by two, these two angles would both be 90 because they're congruent. Because 180 plus, I mean one, because 90 plus 90 is 180, so that would make these two angles congruent. So as soon as you see you have a pair of congruent angles sitting on a linear pair, then you know that that line is perpendicular. And they may not indicate it with the little box like they usually do for a right angle. They would just put the congruency symbol and then you would have to realize that those are 90 degree angles. Now, you could have a linear pair and it could be, have a line drawn through it. Now, these are not necessarily it hasn't been bisected. These aren't congruent angles. This could be 110, and this could be 70. They're still supplements, but they're not congruent angles. So as soon as I see that these two angles are not congruent, then that tells me that this line, let me call it line N, then I would say line N is not perpendicular. because I don't have congruent angles. Theorem, this one's called the perpendicular transversal theorem. And this one states that in a plane, if a transversal is perpendicular to one of two parallel lines, then it's perpendicular to the other line. So this is a, this if then statement is specific to this diagram. So if H is parallel to K and J is perpendicular to H, then I also know that J is perpendicular to K. So it doesn't have the right angle, but because they're parallel lines, then it would also be perpendicular to the other line. Now, if you think about it, as soon as you have parallel lines here, and it's cut by a transversal, then we already can see from prior knowledge that these two angles are corresponding and they're gonna be congruent. So if this top angle here is 90, then the other one is 90, making it perpendicular. So you could also bring in your knowledge of corresponding angles to determine that these are perpendicular. But then again, you can also use this new theorem. This on this theorem, we start out by being told that the lines are parallel, then we can show that we have another perpendicular. On the next theorem that looks like it's named very similar, this one starts out with both of them being perpendicular and you prove parallel, so it's like reversed. So this one is called the lines perpendicular to a transversal theorem, and this one says, in a plane, if two lines are perpendicular to the same line, then they are parallel to each other. The other theorem on the previous slide was perpendicular transversal theorem. So same words, just different order with a few more words added in on this one. So again, same idea here. Notice we could use our corresponding angles converse to also say the same thing here. So since I have corresponding angles here, then I could go back and use the corresponding angles converse and say that M is parallel to N. Or I could use the lines perpendicular to a transversal theorem. 
So again, if two lines are perpendicular to the same line, then they are parallel to each other. So the last slide is an example. And what this is, is the photo of the layout of a neighborhood. And it wants us to determine which lines, if any, must be parallel in the diagram. And it wants us to explain our reasoning. Our explanations are gonna be using one of the theorems that we just learned. Now, I know this is kind of hard to see, but I'm gonna show you where the lines are. I'm gonna zoom in here. So if you look here, I know it's kind of hard to see, but right here is the letter S. So this is line S right here, this red line. This is line T right here. This one's U, so I'm pointing at these lines right here. And then over here, this is P. This is Q. And then I also have right angles in the picture. Let me see if I can maybe go over these in yellow. So I've got a right angle. Oh, the yellow doesn't show up very good. Let me find another color here. Maybe pink. So I got a right angle right here and right here and right here. Okay, so I'm gonna use um, one of the theorems that I just learned and or presented to you. And notice that P and Q both are perpendicular to line S. So here is P and here is S, I'm sorry, P, P and Q. And here is S, and notice they're both perpendicular. Um, P and Q are both perpendicular to S. Let me see, let me do it in pink. So here's P, here's Q, and here's S, and they're both got right angles right here. So since P and Q are both perpendicular to line S, I can use the lines perpendicular to a transversal theorem to state that P and Q are parallel. So let me go ahead and write this out for you. Okay, so lines P and Q are both perpendicular, because they have that right angle there, to line S. So, by the lines perpendicular to a transversal theorem, we can state that P is parallel to Q because they're both perpendicular to S. Now, there is another pair of parallel lines in here. And those, that's going to be S and T. So let me go back to my picture. So I have line S here. And then I have line T. And notice they're both, and I wrote over the right angle, but they were both perpendicular to line Q. And I can use exactly the same theorem for those. And I can state that lines S and T are both perpendicular to line Q. So by the lines perpendicular to a transversal theorem, I can state that S is parallel to T. Okay, so from the photo, you've got P parallel to Q and S parallel to T. Those are your two sets of parallel lines.